Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday Wisdom and we're here with Brenda Rogers again. This year we decided to um, actually, I, I, I made the decision uh, last time I spoke to uh, Brenda, it was like, oh yes, let's do this. So this year I want to do a deep dive with some women that I really, really know and love and trust and I know are on the same page with um, supporting women to really shine their light and to to be the women of light that they that they truly you know that that essence and bringing that essence out and I know Brenda is one of those beautiful women um, a sister of mine that uh, we've known for known each other for quite a while met through through business right uh, which is which is interesting but um Today we want to do a, another deep dive um, and an extension really to what we were talking about um, last Wednesday. So if you missed last Wednesday, it was a really great conversation. So jump in there and, and have a look. But um, today we want to talk about raising the standard of body image. And um, this is a hot topic for both of us um, I know that you also, I had a, you know, I was anorexic as a kid. And, um, uh, you know, emotional traps of being a woman and growing up as a young girl and all of those crazy things that we go through. And and even this morning, I'll share, I want to share with you in a minute what happened this morning for me. So let's talk about body image and and all the gunk that's, that's there, right? It's crazy. Okay. Yeah, it is absolutely crazy and it's it's interesting how we just accept it. You know, it seems to start as soon as young girls hit their teens and it, we've normalised it. Yeah. And I don't think we should. I think us women in finding our activist heart, to finding and owning our anger and our rage and our... Our, our righteous indignation about these things so that we can put an end to it because I think it's up to us. Yeah. Uh, and I was, because I'm writing a book at the moment, so, you know, people say that writing a book is is sort of stepping into all your muck and being surrounded by all your, your stuff, and that's definitely the case. But I was writing this morning about... Um, coming into your to the teens and I've had a couple of people in the last couple of weeks complain to me about their 14 year old daughter and I thought what is it about being 14 and so I was writing about it this morning and I was thinking oh my goodness it's the first period right it's a rite of passage we're going from one status we're in this kind of washing machine for a while and then moving into another status and this lovely lady who is one of my mentors and one of the many, many, many books of, on this topic that I've read, Jane Hardwick Collins, she talks about how a culture celebrates a rite of passage is tells you about how they value that person. Yeah, yeah. And we, so don't, true. we don't celebrate men arc or the first period or you know transitioning from a child to a woman I I know there's women out there who are doing it more often but certainly at my time in my age and this is probably similar to you Liz there was um, I remember you know discovering my first period and and being in shock oh my god what's this I knew what it was, but it was like, no, I didn't feel ready. I was ashamed. I hid it. And I've spoken to my friends who are from an Indian culture or a Sri Lankan culture, and uh, this lady was sharing with me how all of the sisters and the aunties and, the, and her mother would come together and for a couple of days. They would celebrate this awakening, this emerging mother, this emerging woman. And, you know, we think, oh, yeah, yeah, well, you know, just get on with it. And it, it isn't so much the individual response to all of that. It's the, it's the absence of the collective response teaching us 
that we are supposed to be celebrating ourselves as women. And so how does that manifest that we don't celebrate that? The body. The body is the embodiment of the feminine. And so from the moment we hit menarche or puberty, we step out of this love of our bodies and it it grows from there. I know that's where my eating disorder started. That's when I decided to start to control my body. It mm. wasn't an instant eating disorder. It was over, over a few years, but the, the self-destruction and it isn't just eating disorders these days. It's the self-harming. It's the depression. It's the drug taking. It's the alcohol. It's the, you know, there's just why us te- our teenage, our delightful, gorgeous teenage girls. Impl- it's the, um, what's the word? Um, promiscuity, you know, like like yeah. looking for love in the wrong way. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I think we have to get to that root cause, back to that root cause to reclaim our body image because it's not affirmations don't do it. You can no. affirm till the cows come home and nothing changes. I, I, you've probably, I, I know you're oh, talking absolutely. about Absolutely, absolutely. And, and just to add on to what you were saying, like, you know, there's so much, you know, um, so true, you know, like actually the first time um, I had the opportunity to really even talk about it was at a women's circle that you ran um, here in Sydney. And um, when I got my cycle, um, my mum was nowhere to be seen. She was working and my dad helped me. So he got out, you know, diagram and showed you know did the uterus and, and did this for all this technical stuff you know oh, like bless. This, is, this is this is what's happening to you you know bless and him I know I know and um and you know I was I was lucky enough to be able to make that different for my daughter you know we we celebrated and we we had two different ceremonies one that was down at the beach with just her and I and another one where, you know, um, her and I and a friend went out for dinner and celebrated that way, the, the Western way or whatever. Yes. But, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting because as you were talking, it reminded me of um, a mentor that both of you and I have had before, um, Danny Johnson, and one of the things that she talks about is the subliminal messages from such a young age, right? Like, the the um it starts with you know looking at billboards with with women you know beautiful bodies and you know this is the way it looks and and the things that you don't think about the um brochures that you get in the mail for you know target big w best and last all of those you know budget sort of um clothing stores Again, with, you know, women in scanty little, you know, bras and undies, but, you know, absolutely gorgeous figures. And we all start from a, from a very young age seeing this and going, that is what a woman's supposed to look like from, from yep. little, little, little. And it's so indoctrinated into us that we're not even aware that it's happening. Well, no, I mean, you know, in in order to address our own body image, and I think that for women around the perimenopausal age who are dealing with the the decline of the body, if you like, or the the changing of the body um, away, more further away from that ideal, it can be very confronting. And I think we need to look at how did we learn our body image because it is subliminal it is it isn't something we consciously did it was it was the the gift or not handed to us and you know often it comes from it comes definitely from those those brochures and and those narratives in the culture but it comes from our mother and from a, you know an aunt or a, or an older sister and you know we are learning from their experience. And I know my mother was dieting. When I hit my teens, my mother was dieting. In fact, 
I saw her taking pills and I wanted them too. And so she shared them with me. So we we dieted together. And there was that, you know, like what message does that send? Yeah. It's not okay that, you know, th- there was no no education or teaching that it, it shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't be self-hate and trying to be skinny and have your bones stick out. It should be celebrate your curves because that's really what's happening. We're, yeah. we're, we're going from boyish and how many women diet to become boyish? Yeah. Well, I remember I like I was... I was so skinny that I was so, I was like, I was going to a clinic and um, I was, you know, they were considering putting me into the hospital, which is, which is a scary thing because it's like a prison. Basically you go in, you've only got a bed and a toilet and, you know, if you eat, you're allowed to brush. If you eat, you, you know, like that sort of stuff back then. I don't know what it's like now. But I remember one time going to the clinic and, you know, put it being put on the scales again and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the and the male doctor looked me in the eye and he said, you can stop eating and, and you know, turn into a stick figure and you're never going to lose those legs and hips because I ha- I've, I've got hips and legs that, yes, you, you know, I've got a curvy. Yeah. And, and, and I just remember looking at him, you know, like, I was offended, but it just brought it home, you know, like this is my body and I can burn myself to the ground, Mm. but it's still going to be this way. And, you know, for me it was emotional stuff with my, like as soon as my dad got a kidney, apparently I started eating, like was in the hospital, started eating. But, you know, it's, it's crazy the conditioning and 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 what we see as and, as um you know this is this is what beauty is yeah and you know i really believe that the somehow we at some level and i think this is our realm here on the spiritual level liz that part of us knows it's not right to yeah. be to not be valued, to not be cherished. Part of us knows where that is in our DNA, I don't know. And that our natural, normal human response to that is is anger. Because anger is the emotion that protects our boundaries. And our boundaries have been offended. Our boundaries have been breached. We are not being treated the way that we should be treated. And so the the self harming in whatever form anorexia you know I had binging disorder um, the the even just the self flagellation and the self criticism and the self hate and the you know all that because it all goes inward for boys it goes outward for girls it goes inward I think that's all this healthy natural response to an environment that is dysfunctional and then we put we label that response as mental illness and then we put people <laughs> like you into a hospital and we punish, yeah. we punish again. Yeah. Punish the punishing, the punishing. Da, 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 da. It's or so numbing it down. Take a tablet. Take a tablet because now you've got depression, right? Numb it out. Or anxiety, yeah. Numb it out. And there we have yeah. set up the medicated society. Yeah. If it's not drugs, it's alcohol, it's promiscuity, it's it's something else. And and the the to me, the answer to it all is to honor the feminine. Mm. To honor the feminine. And, and and again, as you're talking, I remember when you know when when I was watching my daughter go through her cycle and and you know there was there was a bit of a bleep in the system because of the the moment that it happened I had my brother up and you know I was navigating um my own stuff family stuff and you know honoring her and having my brother there and being he, he was a guest and blah 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 but we got through it 
But it was really interesting how many women came to me afterwards and asked me to talk to their daughters about their cycle and being a woman and sex and all of this stuff. And how many women are fearful because like we we like again that good girl syndrome and and being perfect and not knowing how to navigate our own feelings around it and wanting to do it the right way and not fuck up our children right so you know oh can I'll give it to someone else I was horrified when I you know the fact that um you know yes there's sex education at school and we you know had it as well but the the level that that is there now and what they're teaching, why aren't we honouring the mother to give that information or the father to give that information? How have we got to the point where even our schools have taken that control from the family? Well, you you can't have this conversation without talking about the patriarchy. Mm. Um, and, you know, patriarchy is just the environment that we live in. And don't switch off, ladies, when you're listening to this. As soon as you hear the word patriarchy, I don't mean bar, bra burning, you know, get out of the kitchen, man hating. I, you know, like that's that's just how that's been demonised. Um, you know, the, the, the patriarchy is a, is, a, is a construct that doesn't work for men or women and there's a better way, and this is what we're all working towards, you and I are definitely working towards. Um, but, you know, it, it, it opens up a conversation. I have a, I'm a stepmother. I'm not a mother. I, I mean, I, I've had one pregnancy, but I consider myself to be a privileged the, or have the honour of being a stepmother, and sometimes that role of, of educating things that the mother is a little bit uncomfortable can fall onto an auntie or a or a best friend or a stepmother and it it opens up the the concept of the childless woman and the the concept of living in a village and you know the statistics show that 20% of, of of women by the time they get to menopause are childless for whatever reason there's multiple reasons that they're, they're childless and you know I've contemplating contemplated why is that so why I think that's a fairly consistent statistic and I just think there's this beautiful beautiful role of the childless woman in the in the uh, healthy effective raising of girls and Mm. probably something similar uh, in in boys and you know, it's it's that sisterhood that's missing. That that everything falls on the mother. You know, the everything falls on, and then what the mother and the pa- the parents can't handle, or what they're not doing, goes to the schools. So, and, and they aren't. They're just doing a sanitized version of it because they are they're non denominational and they're secular and all that kind of stuff. Mainly, unless you go to a Christian school or a religious school, and then you get you get that right? that version of it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, Which is conditioning know, still, right? Like it just in a different way, you know, yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, um good observation. So how do we how do we, you know, how do we move forward with it, you know, like not even as a society, but as an individual woman, you know, like the first the first part is is all about self, isn't it? Finding that comfort, I, you know, I wanted to share because I started doing Pilates and, you know, I'm, I don't know if I'm menopause or, you know, I haven't had my cycle for that's coming up to four or five months now. Um, and seeing my body change and, you know, not doing too much about it. I've, I've been um, seeing you so you know, none of those superchargers anymore, <laughs> the hot flushes they call them. Um, you know, I haven't got any ups and downs emotionally. You know, I'm I'm selling through really well. Um and I'm one of the eldest in Pilates. <laughs> and um 
we we you know get on the reformers and there's a mirror in front of us and I was looking at my body this morning and going yeah wow <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're doing these things with the arms and I'm looking at, you know, the flabbiness of the, the underarms and, you know, like my my big, beautiful round hips and, and legs. And, um, you know, you, you've got to have done some work to be able to honour that and be okay with it. And, you know, I watched one of the young girls come out and she's got the flabby t-shirt on you know like and um and I'm not I'm you know wearing everything you can see it all the you know the the gym clothes but it's really interesting because it's taken me a long time to get here and and now being you know if I hadn't have got there with that you know this is my beautiful body and it's bigger than what is in the you know mainstream as as what's sexy or whatever and you know if I hadn't have got there to this is sexy for me and and I love it I would not have attracted Tim into my life I'm sure mm-hmm. and you know like he loves me mm-hmm. you know like he loves all of that 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 I am and just to be able to be naked walking around the house, you know, like knowing I've got all these bits that are that are different is is so liberating. And to just be able to share that with women, you know, like that we are all so different. As a massage therapist, not, you know, seeing so many different shapes of bodies and, you know, like we're all so different and that's what we need to celebrate, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, well done for the work that you've done on yourself and Mm, thank you um, it's not an easy path and there's a lot of letting go that has to happen and I truly believe and it's certainly my vision and mission to awaken the menopausal postmenopausal women to all of this because I believe it's our responsibility to do the healing Mm. you can't ask a 10 year old to fix this problem. You can't ask a 16-year-old to fix this problem. You can't even ask a 30-year-old. They're busy mothering and and surviving. It's our responsibility to to heal ourselves, find our sacred purpose and teach teach the mothers, teach the the grandmother, you know, the grand the, the children, the our daughters and our granddaughters to to create the change because it's not going to happen in our lifetime, but we can do something for future generations. And so it really is doing the work that you've done in whatever way we have to do it. And, you know, body dysmorphia is huge. You know, that, that, that the body dysmorphia, the technical definition is taking kind of one part of your body, like you, like your arms, or your belly or whatever and 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 throwing your whole self image out because one part isn't perfect it's it's roughly that and i've i've had that for years mm-hmm. and have had a real struggle to embrace this because i am little and you know i've got fine bones and i'm sort of close to that ideal yeah. And some people might even think that I'm there, but even when you're there or close to there, you still don't think you are. Yeah. There's something wrong. Yeah. It's it's so it's not about the actual facts, the actual reality. It's our perspective on it. And that's our own. That's our own to own. That's our own to take responsibility for because men Men find us gorgeous. How many women with body issues and eating disorders say, oh, my husband loves me the way I am. He just wants me to be happy. Yeah. Or Well, there's actually some, I remember um, one of my friends that's got an apple shape, if that's what they, you know, like that's what she calls it. And she said that that statistically um, men find my type of um, body, the, you know, the, Whatever you call it, hourglass look. Um, that that there's something um, chemically within them, because 
my body, uh, two and a half hour labors, man, and I was done. You know, like my, I, my body is really good at birthing yeah. and and holding babies, and so um, you know, there's a chemical something within men and women that they see, you know, so the primitive aspect of it or whatever. But um, absolutely, it's, and yeah. you know, they say the most, the most, the sexiest thing in a woman or on a woman is confidence yeah oh we man just, we haven't we don't have it no but but when you see a woman that's that's got all those curves and the, yeah absolutely and they're strutting it like you can't help but look right I like and I haven't really claimed that until fairly recently you know we can look, look at the the African Americans look at the Maoris look at the the, the Latin Americans and yeah. some of the Europeans, you know, you see them that they'll have they'll have you know underarm hair and and you know leg hair and all these things, and it's a very Western thing for us to be so caught up in this very narrow perspective of what is acceptable body image, and it's just it has to has to be transmuted and transformed. It's and we haven't even touched on you know like this this. Ex, you know this acceptable like it just it just is gut-wrenching for me watching the morphing of this stuff being put into our face like I was I was walking um in a shopping center with with my with Tim a while back actually and the beauty salon with the big full picture of a face, a um, woman's face, and a, pla- you know, hand with a plastic glove on and, an, and a needle yeah. near the lips, right? And I looked at it disgusted and I said, it is now so acceptable that that is now being seen as okay. When, when it first all came out, wouldn't it be horrifying to see a needle in, you know, like, yeah. Next to, so I mean, I can't imagine the pain that women go through to to change their face like that, right? But what's so evil or insidious is the fact that you know a beautician told me that then that the beauty industry is now um, marketing to teenagers and you know twenties, thirties to start getting mini Botox injections to do pre-prevention mm. of wrinkles, mm. like poison into the face for us to look like. And one of the things that it just like, and maybe I'm, I'm, you know, might get smashed here by people I don't know because, you know, it's it's something that a lot of women do and they may say that they want to do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But what I have noticed from from friends that I see that that have this done, you can see that the, the skin is not fresh and alive anymore. There's no wrinkles and you look young, but the 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 skin looks like it's dying. There's no mm. brightness anymore. And it's so sad that we're doing this to our body and the ramifications in within, you know, like yeah. I know I've just jumped into another can of worms, and, you know, we've no, got to... But I, I want to ask you, where is the, the voice of reason? Where is the 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 indignation where is the shock where is the yeah where is the you know this is not right where this yeah. is destroying women this is where is that voice yeah that that like I'm asking you that Liz where is yeah. that voice well well it's being suppressed because women are, are so um conditioned to believe that it's okay and you know like so you're you're saying, well, why is it I'm I'm like because it it is it's a big thing for me to actually talk about it because I, I really I feel passionate about it and sad for like I've got good friends that this is what they're doing, you know like I you know one friend said to me like 
is is relatively, you know, she's critical of, of other people. It's just part of her nature. Um, said to me, you know, if you um, get a spray tan, your body will look better because you, you won't see the lumps and bumps, right? And I went, what, spray chemicals all over the biggest organ in my body, like, so that I look better, <laughs> You can now, I've discovered that you can actually get chemical-free stuff and I've got some and I looked really good in it and I felt really great. But, but um, you know, it's just the, the things that we're doing for beauty, but who's yeah. beauty? I know men, men that I know say those lips look disgusting. They don't like it. Who's who's conditioning us? Exactly. And so, yeah, the... the as you said, you know, like we need to we need to be able to be heard and and have the right to actually say this doesn't this isn't right. We need to live the beauty that we are and let it radiate out. You know, like be a woman of light internally and let that that energy come out and and watch that glow. I know Tim and I will the, when we first met within the first couple of months, I remember him saying to me once, um, because I I pointed out um, a woman and and he said, how do you know a woman of light? And I said, ah, can't you see them? So whenever we're we're walking, um, I'll say, hey, there's another one. Hey, there's another one. And he is now starting to see them, you know, like, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. He's seeing that glow, that energy within. Yeah. I'm actually considering getting little business cards that say, Hey, notice you're a woman of light. Just want to appreciate you. And like uh, you could do I could see you doing something like that. Yeah. You're a gorgeous yeah. woman. <laughs> yeah, I, I think to me it's the um, you know, we talk, I don't know how much longer we've got and because we could go on about this for a while but in my own research it comes from the you you use the word suppression and I would say that you know five centuries of witch burnings probably did it to to basically eliminate the the older wiser woman the wild wise woman postmenopausal woman not just um eliminate them like literally with all mm-hmm. the, the witch hunting and but for it to become very scary to be a healer and a wise woman and a, and a witch and a uh, and to speak up you know I notice it as a naturopath with the social media platforms that you can't really say what you really want to say without the bots the risk of Picking the bots you know cancelling you know with like what's been going on in the world the last few years if you don't agree with the with the mainstream and the mainstream is very it's very masculine and it's very patriarchal and it's very dictatorial and it's also very um, mechanical and not holistic and for those of us who are leaning towards that more feminine cyclic natural side of things you know we get we get gagged, you know. Um, yeah. There is that in still in in the in the in the ether in the in the space that, uh, and so many women get thyroid disorders around that time, you know, and th- throat chakra issues, and um, you know, it is really about this your your mission and my mission to awaken women to to this information so that they can rise so they can speak up so they can recognize their own sense of injustice and make it that so many women are sitting on the not sitting on the couch literally but metaphorically waiting for a a flash of inspiration and purpose to hit them And and in the meantime worrying about their weight and worrying about their aging and worrying about their wrinkles and all those kinds of things. And it's, it's not to denigrate those women, but there's just something so much more available that the world really needs. You know, we need you, everyone out there listening to awaken to your own 
cracks, your own wounds and heal them because inside of that is the gift that you can give back to the world and the world really needs it. The world yeah. Really needs it. Yeah. And, and it's definitely, you know, even though there is that that level that you were talking about of being gagged, there's there's the opportunity for a small stirring, you know, like there's, you know, it's it's safe, ladies. <laughs> it's safe. And um and it how it starts is whispering to the children. Yeah. Whispering to the children, you know. Whispering to each other as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hundred percent. Uh, yeah. Um and yeah, I just I just had a memory of I went to the I know we've got to go. Um I went to um on a boat fishing with Tim and he was putting the boat in and there was a family on a dock or whatever you call it. I don't know what jetty. you call it. A jetty sort of thing, but it was parallel, not not going out. And um I was up on another one and I was feeding um bread to the to the ducks I know I'm not supposed to we had some left <laughs> and um from Tim and so um anyway the the little girl comes over and starts talking to me and so I, you know I shared my bread and we we're throwing the bread with to the ducks and she said you know I I found this you know she's got this little screw I said oh where'd you find that and she said just here somewhere I said I wonder if it's got a place here somewhere. And she said, yeah, oh, look, here. She just puts it in between two, two things. I said, oh, my gosh, you fixed it. <laughs> and, and she said, yeah, I fixed it. <laughs> anyway, finish the bread, off I go. We get into the boat. And as we're walking, well, sorry, starting to go past the family, the mum and mum's turned up and the dad has talked to her, you can see, and they just both looked at me with this appreciation for the conversation and the connection I had with, you know, just this little moment, you know. Beautiful. Just that touch, that little touch you can do, right? <laughs> that that village moment as, you you know, as we talk about. So yeah. I love your I, stories, Liz. <laughs> oh, it was, I mean, it was just I love that, you know, like that just that little moment of connection, you know. It was so beautiful. So. Brenda, I just want to share again, um, we did last time as well, but I, I want to bring it up again. This Friday I'm coming to your house to do um, Sacred um, Nourish workshop and I think you've only got one spot left. Is that correct? One spot left for this month, maybe. Somebody's getting yeah. back to me today. But it's it's on consistently. It's on again on the 10th of February and uh, I am going to be taking it online. We're just doing a few practice ones before we before I do that. So uh, sacred nutrition, it's really about this kind of stuff in the context of food and healing our relationship to food so that we can heal our whole lives and just questioning some of the assumptions that we make about what we've been talking about today you know is that really the truth you know do you really have to lose five kilos do you do you you know do you really need to work an extra five hours a week and not have time for cooking just because you need to you need a bit more money like it's just it's yeah just this beautiful discussion opening up about questioning some of our unhealthy assumptions and beliefs around being in the kitchen you know and there's there's I mean there's just so much rubbish and baggage around food and the kitchen and all that stuff so it's it's going to be it's going to be absolutely amazing and every one will be very different because of the different conversations dynamics with the women and that's that's what I'm looking forward to is having the group of women because I've been at your place before in a different um, course with the feminine presence stuff um, and just having those discussions with women, excuse me, um, and being being together again and, and having those nourishing conversations. So yeah. um, can you still throw the, the link in? Because if, you know, if, at least it's a connection for people, for women, if they want to look into 
um, doing the next ones or or grab that one spot. So, absolutely, I'll do that right now. Excellent, lovely to have you again. We are going to be what, uh, talking again next Wednesday because I'm loving these deep dives and um, and thank you again. I'm I um, thoroughly enjoy just. I mean, we're literally just sitting here having our normal conversation we just happen to put it on live right <laughs> we get deep babies we, we get do. deep <laughs> it's so good it's so good thank you so much again brenda thank you to everyone that's watching i hope you got a lot of value out of that and we will see you again next wednesday see ya